Good day, fellow investors. So here we are. There has been a great crash yesterday. Stocks are already rebounding, but let me give you an overview that I think you're really interested in. In what's going on with the stock market? What's going on with the economy? With the recession upcoming? With the reaction of the Fed and everything else that's very important for us long-term investors and what's the outlook what's the likely output what are the likely scenarios so let's start immediately we'll discuss the bear market how there is too much index fund selling the news the outlook the virus the outlook on the economy the reaction from the fed ecb governments germany etc and then put everything into a investing perspective into a conclusion that should add value and that should give an indication into what is the best strategy in this situation. The first really interesting topic is, okay, the bear market stocks down 10% in one day. However, if you look at the Dow, down 9.99%, the S&P 9.51, the Nasdaq 9.44. So practically the sell-off didn't differentiate among anything simply this was the sell of their liquidity sell everything no matter what no matter where no matter what so it's really too much index fund too much uh, efficient markets a little bit now you see really what was the issue that i was usually mentioning with index fund and everything that you are buying everything and the market doesn't differentiate between value, between long-term outlook, between anything. And then on the rebound, now I'm looking as I'm filming this uh, prior to market open, pre-market, everything is up again, 5% exactly. So everything is the same. There will is volatility, of course, we'll, which we'll discuss in a moment. And if we look at the world index, down like the Dow, 9.91%. And it's really ridiculous. There are completely different assets, different economies, different everything, and everything moves in the same way. So really, really irrationalities all over the place, but that's normal and that's something we have to expect. And then on the situation, the volatility, read this on the news from Bloomberg, Australian equities erased the loss of 8.1% to finish up 4.4% and Thai stocks ended positive after falling 13%. So it's crazy volatility, but that crazy volatility is normal when it comes to such situations. Another look at the constituents of the Dow Jones, all close to 10%, except J&J that was down just 5.54%. The rest all equal, but those are all different businesses. And if you look at the NASDAQ, well, Netflix cannot fall equally to other companies. Netflix, in this case, people will stay home, will watch more Netflix, buy it $10 a day. So can't be priced equally in a reaction and this shows the rationality of the market nevertheless okay this is something we already know so nothing new there but it's nice to see how it really comes how it really materializes in a situation like this however this is also very important two of the comments on yesterday's video were about how a lot of people invested and then also took a loan took margin and they are now really down, so they have been forced to sell. So even Wild Boy, 789, 789, borrowed 10% of his total portfolio, and they have deemed his holdings too risky and made him a margin call forced to sell. So even that, even those margin calls, margins that are always at all-time highs at market peaks, have been called, and that's also one reason for the sell-off. Then another a rush to liquidity. When people panic, they sell everything and then they all they want is liquidity. And we see now how, okay, even currencies, the bonds, the governments still give more safety than other things that you see now were just speculation like, unfortunately, the Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies, technology, blockchain will be in the future, but for now still People prefer currencies that you can use to buy things if needed in panic. This is the problem. Of course, this is the normal exit door, but the bull market has been growing over the last 10 years 
And now the exit door when everybody wants to get out is really, really small. And therefore you see such movements on the market. Also, if you look at this from Bloomberg, it's the scream fest. It's the biggest fear situation since they measure it. How they measure it, I don't know. But over the last 30 years, which is pretty, pretty crazy. People have been more scared yesterday than in 2009, perhaps because the stock market is at double the level of 2009 with similar earnings and much lower interest rates. But that's another story for another video. So please subscribe and click that notification bell for interesting videos about the market, stock analysis, investing mindset, and of course, long-term value investing. Now, what is the conclusion of this market story? Simply expect volatility. You see how 2008, this darkest side of this video, 99 to 2002, have been extremely volatile. Then when the market stabilizes, it becomes smoother. And then when there is uncertainty, the markets become volatile again. As it was especially the case in October 2008, now again expect volatility as the market reacts to all kinds of news and everybody tries to speculate or is forced to margin sell, buy again, so etc. etc. Because there is still a lot of money in the system and waiting on the sidelines. On the news yesterday, the news were UK economy not in a robust state to cope with coronavirus. Norwegian laying off stuff, uh, Trump met people that were tested positive for coronavirus, uh, ECB officials suggested rate cut, etc, etc. So a lot of black swans, uncertainty, not knowing what will happen, uh, friends closes schools, uh, Macron calls virus epidemic of the century, so which it is of this century we are now. So very bad news, which push people to panic, which push people to sell stocks. And we have seen stocks plunge 10%, which was the worst day since 1987. A little bit of everything, but mostly people are selling in fear. However, the world is not ready for this. Of course, this is a black swan, so impossible to be ready for this. And it needs time to adapt, adapt, thus it takes time, time leads to uncertainty and to panic selling as we have seen. It's likely that the UK, Europe, USA will likely, USA will likely shut down, like in China, there will be economic consequences, of course, and we'll see how big will those economic uh, con consequences be and how will those be dealt with, which is again an uncertainty. So for now, I simply expect volatility. And this is an Italian actor that made a video showing his dead sister in the bed that nobody wants to pick up. And uh, that's an unfortunate part of this story. But this really, really leads to panic. And there will probably be a lot of it. So even if today's stocks rebounded, we might see more bad news, unfortunately, in the future. So expect volatility and you have to think long term will we deal with this situation so my answer to the news is think long term will we deal with the situation will we be able to adapt put new measures and then go on forward move from there onward probably yes will it hit short term the economy definitely yes but always think okay long term the world will probably be a better place and we will learn how to deal with this. And there will probably be more spending on infrastructure, healthcare, etc. to prevent future outbreaks that will certainly come again. Then, and there is another very important situation. The oil price, the drop, the open pipe pipes from Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia, etc., will have also repercussion on what's going on, but we'll make a video update special on this. So again, subscribe and uh, we'll there see how it is going to impact the economies, positive and negatively. The thing is that there is a lot of diversification. Somebody will go bankrupt, somebody will not go bankrupt. And as always, if we go back to Buffett, only when the tide goes out, you do discover who 
has been swimming naked. And there are a lot of people that have been swimming naked, not ready, not will some will be helped by the government, some will not, some will get the credit line, some will not. But that's the story with markets. That's how it goes when it comes to investing. And you will see it's uncertainty, but keep in mind, long term, investing is a positive sum game. On the virus, on the coronavirus, to mention it here on YouTube, I see everybody's fearful to mention it, but mainline China, the news, if we focus on the news, not on the headlines, they have stabilized the situation. South Korea also stabilizing the situation. So it is possible to fight it. It is possible to contain it. It is possible to stabilize it. So those are really, really good news that I think will have a positive in impact and lead to a positive solution in the shorter to medium term. Whole world has been contagious by now almost, and especially Italy, unfortunately. And this shows the cracks in the system, the many issues that countries have, and that lead to panic, that lead to unfortunately deaths. And I hope in the future we'll use also this experience to improve things and make things better. But let's hope that the case from China, a similar situation expands to the world, that the virus can be contained and then that life can go on with some restrictions probably for a while, but later as normal. Also, I've been reading a lot how there has been a different approach in South Korea, in China and Italy and uh, that's something that the governments and the people of Italy will have to discuss and work on in the future. Even if I've bought something in Italy and uh, I've asked, should I pay cash? This was a month ago or uh, with card, they said pay with uh, cash. And then I said, oh, yes, yes, you are not paying Italian taxes. And, his, and the guy said, oh, yeah, but if they check how much I'm purchasing, I have to find each year I have to find solutions how to justify my big purchases, my big costs in relation to what I sell. And that's Italy. And uh, then if the uh, hospitals are not prepared, well, it's also the fault of each of the persons that are trying to evade taxes as it is a national sport, unfortunately. Number one, soccer is second. And that's something that has, will have to be dealt and I hope will be dealt in the future. Now, on the economy, what? with half of the world in lockdown, global recession ahead, of course, the impact will be huge for at least two month lockdown, four months at least till stabilization. What will be the global GDP? I haven't seen much forecast as nobody wants to forecast such an uncertain situation. Down 5% perhaps, down 10%. Who knows? It's impossible to know, but it certainly won't be growing 3% as it was the expectation up till now. So this, the thing is it's spiral. As demand goes down, it's a downward spiral. People lose jobs spending uh, gets cut down as you lose job you don't have money to spend so it's a spiral and that therefore it's normal a recession is coming that's a certain and the question is how will we deal with that if we look at uh, moody's uh, high yield bankruptcies forecasts it's expected to be a 10 percent already this year it was as 13 percent in 2009 so the forecast is there, we have to expect issues in the future and we'll see how it will be dealt with. But some people, some businesses will go bankrupt, some businesses that you might own will go bankrupt and there's nothing we can do about it. However, given the situation, some will go bankrupt, some will rebound and we will make five times your money. Keep that in mind when it comes to investing. Also same spending, less spending, less games, uh, less tickets, less salaries, less everything. And there's nothing we can do about it. We can do nothing about it, but the Fed has reacted 1.5 trillion here, 5 trillion here to do whatever it ta takes to prevent unusual disruptions. 
So similarly, other central banks have reacted, the Bank of China, the Bank of Japan, Reserve Bank of Australia, the European Central Bank, everybody's reacting, plus the governments are going in, Lagarde, the ECB president, putting more money into the system and asking governments to start with fiscal stimulus, which Germany is starting to do. Other countries have prepared packages. So this time it's not like 2009 where they weren't ready for the economic part of the issue, the liquidity. Everybody is reacting pretty quickly. There are always delays with this. They want to really be sure about what's going on. But we can be sure that they are reacting on the economic side. What will, what will be the impact of this and the help of this? We don't know, but with the whatever it takes attitude, it should be okay-ish. There will be some consequences. We'll discuss that in the moment. But it's certainly that the diff the situation is pretty different than 2009, where these uh, tools were just abstract and unthinkable of that are now uh, normal. So we'll see how that works and ends up. So to summarize a little bit, expect volatility, think long term, which will erase the volatility and all the news, the noise, will, which will allow you to focus on the important things, virus, humans will prevail as always ask your grandparents what they passed in their lives and you will see how adaptable we are the economy will have repercussions but help from banks and governments printing money is there that is a positive however stick to your strategy invest and think where will the business be in five to ten years and something very interesting given what the governments are doing more money printing and everything, where will the currencies be in 10 years? Where will the value of currencies be? And here we go back to the main topic of this channel, invest in real assets that have value, no matter what's the currency, no matter what's the value of the currency. Thank you for watching. Check my website uh, for more things, books, podcasts, uh, my research, charity, whatever, subscribe to this channel, click that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.